Gentlemen, welcome back to the dirt under the deck. I thought I'd really sex this video up for you with some nice Crocs. Nothing like that uh, soccer dad apparel to really get the ladies crazy. So, it was a short video, I hope. Um, relevant info will be in the description, because uh, the only reason to post this is the name of the game is YouTube is the only social media I can fucking put up with, and even that, just barely. So here we are. Um, in essence, what happened is Hunter Seeker Army, clandestine airsoft, we got together and we were going to uh, build, you know, a new lapping system, offer it as a service. Ta-da! And, uh, and there was a video a while ago announcing that. Isn't that wonderful? Nobody gives a shit. Um, so the question was, how do we quantify this? Because we wanted to go and test a whole bunch of things. And part of the process was sectioning barrels and looking at them and seeing how does lapping progress, what happens, you know, how much is, is, is too much in terms of looking at the bore and stuff. But um, there's also a question of, you know, what is your actual improvement? Because, for example, with this lapping process, if you section barrels that are lapped less, you can actually see areas in the barrel where you're not getting cut because the lap is straightening that bore, increasing that diameter consistency and that surface flatness. And so you're cutting the high points and you're leaving the low points until you keep going through until you've cut it all flat. Now, there's a big advantage to this. Even if you do a partial lap, the BB doesn't want to change direction, right? That requires force. It wants to stay in a straight line. And so if you've got small divots, but you've got a perfectly flat ramp going to it, it will be better than if you have the sort of you know, obviously grossly enlarged, but undulations, what have you. Anyway, how does this all relate to quantification? Well, basically, shooting protocol was the, the, usual, the usual suspect. So we pulled a, um, a barrel at random from the 455 millimeter pile of the um, clandestine enhanced R-hop barrels. Those are the barrels that we R-hop for clandestine, and they've got few little subtle tweaks to them to enhance performance beyond what you'll get out of just like a regular, say, Prometheus barrel, all else being equal straightness, bore diameter, you know, bore consistent, like go down the list, but all else being equal, it's got a few tweaks that should give them a little leg up in terms of performance. They're already great performing barrels with our hops on top of it. So pull one, um, shoot it in a bit, make sure, you know, your R-hop is broken in, you know, because you don't want to do anything like you lap a barrel and, or, and that, that basically breaks in the R-hop for you. And so then what you're seeing isn't improvement from the lapping. You're seeing the improvement from shooting in. So you want to get the, get the barrel. You want to clean it because you want to clean every fucking barrel. I, you know, number one complaint, if somebody comes back having bought one of those barrels and says, oh, this doesn't shoot. Did you clean it? No. Well, clean it. It's been in a workshop. Workshops are dirty. Fucking clean it. Nobody wants to pay what it costs for somebody like Hunter Secret 5, me, or somebody else to clean that barrel for them and then put that through a series of markups. Like, if you don't understand how business works, that's horrible. But, you know, it, the punchline is nobody wants to pay for somebody else to clean their barrel. So we don't like very, we don't super carefully clean them before they go out. They get a rough cleaning and you can just clean them before you shoot them, whatever. So what was the protocol? Clean the barrel, shoot the barrel in to, to, to break in the R hop, right? Clean the barrel again, pass, um, 30 rounds of whatever the test ammo. In this case, we used elite force 0.2 gram bio BBs because they're reasonably consistent BB, widely available, reasonably good quality we didn't sort them because we didn't want this test to be something that somebody else couldn't replicate and be like well if you don't own a scale that can go out to you know f micrograms then you know fuck you uh, or anything else like that so we didn't sort them um and and so 30 rounds of that again i'm gonna put the exact protocol in the description in case i misspeak because um, I've got no script here. There, there's, there is no script. It's just, it's just mommy, mommy Crocs and jeans and the targets. Um, 30 rounds to, uh, to, shoot, to, to reset it, and then you shoot five groups in order. One, two, three, four, five, every time. 
same way. This is the same thing I do when I'm shooting precision rifles, you know, and I personally shot this with what was a basically stock VSR. You can, you can see like all the details are listed over here. I'll, I'll post pictures, but in essence it's stock, but for what it takes to put an AEG barrel in it, which is what you want to do if you shoot a VSR. But anyway, um, otherwise stock gun, stock spring, stock piston, you know, the works, um, shoot that inside no wind no breeze you know it's calm air um and see what you get and so pre-lapping you know all that happened before the lapping and we shot this group or these five groups rather five groups of five shots each and if the wind would kindly fuck off you can see you know you've got some variability the best group out of all 10 groups shot was right here and it's 12 and a quarter millimeters center to center. So if you pull this out to um, 30, mil 30 meter equivalent, you'll see you're actually doing quite well um, if you compare it to the 30 mil meter challenge. Obviously, that's not entirely how accuracy works. You can't just straight scale it, but this barrel did very, very well. All right. Um, and the average center to center distance, center to center means you measure from the center of the holes, not the outside edges of the holes. It's, it's a target shooting. If you don't understand why, just trust me. Um, so, okay. So that. Then lap the barrel, clean the barrel again, lap the barrel. 100,000 passes. 100,000 passes. Okay. Our, our, our highest tier lapping protocol we offer. All right, fine. Now, go back. Clean it again, obviously. Um, shoot it, same, 30 rounds. Um, just to make sure, you know, everything is cleaned, it's reset, the hop is rebedded, you know, all that stuff. And this is, this is, to be clear, like, it, you can, you can go purchase one of these, the barrel was picked at random, you can go purchase one of these from Clandestine and have this done to it, right? This is, this is meant to be a representative test. Okay, um, that's done to it. Another 30 rounds, then shoot another five groups of five rounds. Okay, and here you can see, again, your groups, same gun, same range, same fucking, same ammo, same, same ammo out of the same fucking bottle, same everything, like, there's always some guys like, oh, this is bullshit, you fake it. And you're like, no, it's, it was all the same thing. And if you don't, like, trust me for it, I'm not going to film, you know, tens of hours of, of, of work and testing and stuff to, like, prove it to those people. But here it is. Um, average CTC was 18.25 um, millimeters. But you can see, and I watched myself do it. Like, I watched it happen. I, I, jerked the trigger a little bit and I pulled this one freaking round which pisses me off because it actually significantly increased the overall size and you can see without the flyer the CTC drops by about a millimeter and a quarter average across all these groups but flyers are part of the game and so is sucking dick if you play airsoft anyway so here's what we got now what gain is that well that is an average of 19% improvement from the lapping machine. That's why I'm making this video, which at this point is not short anymore. I'm sure all the thumbs down have come marching in. But 19% improvement, you know, including the fact that I, I sent that flyer out there, that's huge. We were not expecting that. I was expecting 5%. As I was shooting these groups, I was looking at this and going, fuck me. It's going to be Murphy who comes out here and makes these groups larger than before. And, you know, it's going to be like, I'm going to have to do this all over again. And it's going to take a lot larger sample size to come up with anything. And, uh, you know, no, it, it came out and it was way better than I was expecting. And the other thing, if you look, it's not just random either. If you look at the deviation, the deviation from between group sizes for this is less, even if you include the fire, is less than half the deviation of these groups and group sizes, which means our precision has considerably improved by doing this. And it has improved far more than I was expecting. Granted, this is probably the most lapped barrel ever. We haven't sold one of the 100,000 pass barrels yet. This is the first 
you know, proper enhanced, like all this, the full spicy chalupa, shall I say. Like we've done 100,000 pass tests on, on, um, on brass test barrels, but this is the first like full spicy enchilada. You know, you've got, you've got the R hop, you've got the enhanced barrel design, you've got, um, the 100,000 pass laughing, like the whole, the whole shebang. And this is what it came out as in 20, 19% technically, 19% improvement is huge. I talked to a bunch of my tech friends and I said, how, what do you think? You know, you've lapped stuff. What do you think? They're like, well, five, maybe 8%, something like that. Like this is way more than we were expecting. This is not a fringe benefit. And this is already quite an accurate barrel. So I was really not expecting this kind of gain. But here it is, these are the targets, they're right here. Um, if you pull out the flyer, you got 24.5%, 25% essentially gain over the barrel stock with r -hop, what have you. And it, I, I just, I don't know, part of the reason why I'm going like very carefully and very slowly and saying too many words is, it's like, this is way more than we were expecting. I've been doing this for years, I'd never, gone out and and done this many lapping passes with this new lap system to be fair part of this is like this is not a saleable lap system because the laps they're even more delicate they're longer so you get better diameter consistency improvement like it's this whole fucking thing that we're doing it's a real pain in the cunning linguals but like Man, this this is one of those things. It's like, okay, if you if you want to make something and it doesn't have to be saleable, like, how would you do? How would you solve this problem? Like, this is how I'd solve this problem. And you know, clandestine and hunter secret. Like, we we put our collective noggins together and we came up with this. And you know, I think it's just great. Will this happen every barrel? Probably not. I have no idea. It's entirely possible somebody else out there makes a barrel that's so good that it's in essence pre-lap. But I don't know anybody who's lapping barrels. I think all of these things are cut with um, gun drills and maybe have a reamer to finish them if you're lucky. Or I know Mad Bull was hobbing, which is, you know, that's why if you look down a Mad Bull barrel, you can see that, uh, at least this used to be the case, I haven't bought a Mad Bull barrel in years since I'm not teching anymore not like that anyway but you could see the the spirally you can feel the ribbing in it and stuff like that and all these different things they all they all can get erased if they're not granted if they're not too significant you can you obviously can't put can't put lipstick on a pig and call it a prom date but you know so there it is guys i hope that is you know the the close in-person fetishistic look at two pieces of paper and uh, and my my sexy crocs that you all have always wanted and this video has now dragged on for an intolerable 13 and a half minutes so uh i'm gonna call this off and uh i'll see you guys at the next video have a good one and uh again fucking everything's down in the description don't watch the video like read the description you can read faster than you can listen to someone talk unless you're an idiot in which case well then what the fuck Toodles, guys.